tiny specks of land from here on out. Yesterday was the first day we lost sight of land. Both the water and sky were perfectly clear. The water was, as Jeff calls it, power in blue. <laughs> what a day. Today was the day for Chris, anchors and trysels. I had a better sleep wedged into my bunk, and the morning stowing some ornery anchors as we motor sailed into schools of flying fish. A hellish night in a hot and sweaty bunk with the ship heaving in every direction. I thought I would either fall out or burn up. In the afternoon, and oil bulwarks, fixed heads, repaired doors and engines, etc. Around 1600, the wind came up from the south-southwest, so we finally set a reef main and settled in to sail. Close reached at nine knots. What a lady! <laughs> by King Neptune on the equator. It used to be a polywog, now a shellback. Got half of a beard shaved off and two racing stripes shaved into my legs. Also pine tar and tallow got thrown all over my body. immense apartment complexes for all kinds of sea life. Huge fish swam around in schools and you could dive down and follow in the center of them. Saw penguins, snorkeled, really cool to see them swimming. Chase one for about 15 yards before it ditched me. Lots of really cool days sailing. Boat is just flying 8 to 10 knots and feels like it's barely moving. Leading a reef and main top set, getting more involved.
unsettling to be sailing in the high seas. I felt vaguely seasick all the time, and the creaking of the ship sounded like it was on the verge of falling apart. One time in the middle of the night, I was jolted awake, if I was asleep at all, by a huge BOOM! It sounded like we had run smack into something. I sat straight up and listened for the water to come pouring in. It didn't, but I didn't get much sleep that night. Oh yes, the routine. Up in the morning, depending on your time of watch, reading my book, eating lunch, working out, and then a study or another read. Speaking of studying, I smoke the intermediate exam. Weather is fairly consistent with the odd gust and lull, but we seem to be averaging 7 to 7.5 knots. The motion is fairly smooth, but every now and then a wave catches the boat just right and splashes everyone in their belongings up on deck. The days all blend together out here. I usually nap, with a short break for breakfast, until around 10 or 11, when I stumble onto the blistering hot deck. Then follows reading, studying, talking and eating, with a little euchre or mug up before bed. There's definitely a different feeling in the boat when it's 1,400 miles from the nearest point of land. The boat becomes your home, and even the swim stops that allowed us to escape are no more. We are on the same heading, constantly moving from between 5 to 10 knots, which, which was reached last night in a squall that came up suddenly. Spotted land for the first time in over two weeks. Island is basically uncharted, no depths. Felt really cool, almost like early explorers coming to a new place and knowing nothing about it. Kids loved being there. They played all day, barefoot, filthy in the mud or dust, and free with seven Pitcairn kids. Pitcairn Island. First thing when I arrive, I meet Mavis, the 60-something matriarch, who spends most of her time rolling thatch and pandanus leaves, and they offer me my first drink of fresh passion fruit juice, soon to become my favorite fruit. Pitcairners have their own form of dialect which is derived from the 18th century English, along with some Polynesian. To say, where are you going? You say, oh, you been. And the toilet is called a Duncan. Pineapples are apples, and bananas are called plans. Oh, 
A wonderful and sad goodbye with three songs alongside, from them to us. It is very moving. Each time I wonder whether we will see our friends again. Me and Molly said a tearful goodbye to Irma today on the landing. When we got back out to the boat, they sang sweet by and by to us. I cried a lot, and so did most people. For the next couple of days, I was depressed. I planned to go back there one day, but it is sad thinking and knowing that it will never be the same again. In many ways, it is a true paradise there. Lovely, generous people. It was weird to be back aboard. Only five days had gone by, and it already felt strange again. In fact, I even felt a little seasick. Mangrave. Mangrave is surrounded by major coral reefs. Getting in proves somewhat difficult, and John the Bosun has to guide us in from the yards. Something like navigating a maze. <laughs> French Polynesians fully open up to us for letting their children invade our boat and the yard swing. They shower us with fruit, music, and good company. A couple even offer us gifts of necklaces, shells, and Jono a guitar. Polynesia has some of the best and roughest sailing we've hit so far. With the main double reefed and only the foreign jumbo to help, the grace is still reaching 7 to 8 knots. Waves have been at 10 to 15 feet for the last two days, and we're so far healed over, our capital goes under the water every so often. Unfortunately, there's been some crazy squalls as well, the worst we've had so far. They throw the ship about like a ragdoll, and it's all we can do to secure the skylights.
few days ago, we passed the equator and returned to the northern hemisphere. Everyone leapt overboard to swim across again, only this time the water was filled with jellies. The ensuing shrieks of pain accompanied by rashes were enough to scar anyone's memory. Luckily, I only had to watch, still being in, in, unable to swim because of my tattoo. seconds it was upon us. The wind screamed in and the rain began to hammer down. waves have been clearing our windward side, crashing over the hold skylight and off the leeward cab rail. We've spent a lot of time wet. It's been cold too. No longer does getting soaked feel like a lukewarm shower.
afternoon. We launch a dory, the hall is hauled. So starts our story. The pushers pushed her out. We start piling in. That's when Skipper yelled at me. You're about to sink your dory. I am just a simple trainee. How's it know what all the show was about? How was I to know that the plug was out? Put your plug in. Put your plug in. Going ashore with the skipper. He promised us he wouldn't tip her. He started rocking about, cold water pouring in. I could feel the deep blue seas. Hey, skipper, sink our dory. I am just a simple trainee. How to know that this trip would be Treading water on the cold blue sea Feel my legs again, feel my legs again Later on, on the road home We hit a rock, not just a little stone We started bailing out, the water pouring in that's when it occurred to me I'm about to sink my dory There's no moral to my story I don't know what I'm talking about So all you trainees come and scream and shout Love your dory, love your dory Say it ain't so, I will not row, turn the story around, I wanna swim home na 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 na